back to a brand new video. My name is Jade Shinyu and I help people reclaim back their power physically, mentally and spiritually. Now today we're talking about attraction and how to be very attractive and alluring and to have a very attractive energy to people in relationships for love but also for career and money and all these other things that we desire within our external reality. Now the funny thing is in today's society is people heavily base attraction on physical appearance. However, it's not enough. So people heavily rely on looking pretty or looking a certain way or having a certain aesthetic to be accepted and be, to be loved or to be attractive. But in reality, it's your energy that makes you attractive because you could be someone who's very physically attractive but still get rejected. So it really doesn't matter as much as people think. And of course, this isn't to, you know, say that, oh, wearing makeup or going to the gym is bad. Of course, that's cool, but you have to do it for the right reasons. Do it because of health. Do it because you just enjoy being expressive and creative and playing around with your look, etc. The only way it becomes toxic is when we're doing it purely because you crave that attention, you crave that love um, from someone externally. And when it becomes literally, it turns and manifests into body dysmorphia. Now this is heavily linked to codependency and this is heavily linked to also people pleasing because basically people pleaser, you're trying to manipulate people to like you. And of course, this always stems from childhood trauma. So you would have likely had very neglectful parents, um, either one or both of them, whatever it was, you know, they've done something to make you not feel heard. They've done something to not make you feel ultimately loved. So they rejected you or maybe they just abandoned you entirely leaving you and never having a relationship with you so all of these wounds and traumas manifest into people always seeking validation you're always seeking validation from other people externally so it can literally destroy your life because it can manifest in so many different ways for women it normally manifests as extreme body dysmorphia so it's extremely toxic because this is completely untrue and I can tell you from my own experience that it really doesn't matter how attractive you may be. If you don't have that energy, if you have this sort of neediness or um, toxic sort of energy of like desperately wanting people, their attention, their validation to make you feel good, to make you feel worthy, to have you, to make you have a good self-esteem, then it's never ever going to happen is never going to manifest you will never find someone like that you will never be nurtured or loved in loved in the way that you deserve if you have this energy because it repels that it's the opposite of it and this is something that i've struggled with you know my entire life <laughs> on and off and it's something that I really had to learn and come to terms with and it was only when I truly started to focus on myself, on bettering myself but in a more positive, compassionate way, not in a punishing way, that things started to change, things started to shift finally because back in my teens, especially my teens and my early adulthood, I used to punish myself in the way of like, you know, you have that self-critical talk of I'm not good enough so for me in my teen years it manifested as an eating disorder it manifested as self-harming it manifested as an obsession body dysmorphia of being a certain weight of being a size zero you know six wherever it was <laughs> and if I didn't fit this external um, look then I would attack myself so because then I would feel and have these very negative programming of I'm not good enough I'm not good enough so it really does stem to that one mantra of you not feeling good enough and this is because you had that program in your head likely just from your childhood or even from past life experiences or even some other trauma a toxic relationship perhaps with a narcissist that made you not feel good enough so they manipulated you to take away that self-love because that's what they do so it really is just like stepping back and realizing you have to let go you have to really 
but let go and get rid of that resistance between craving and needing external validation from other people to make you feel good about yourself because this is probably the most unattractive thing that you can have this energy is extremely unattractive and you won't manifest someone who's going to nurture you and find you attractive and really enjoy being in your in your company and this can be really hard to hear at times and i remember when i first learned it i was just like oh my god like because we have this kind of fairy tale again fairy tale programming of um you know especially if you have a victim mindset you'll want to be saved by a knight in shining armor, especially if you've gone through childhood trauma. So you'll have this victim consciousness of like, I want to be saved and just, I want to be loved by some angel, some savior to come into your life. But this is literally just a codependent <laughs> trauma response and it's never gonna end well and it just will not happen. You have to be your own savior. And then ironically, when you are, that's when you'll get someone who comes into your life who will truly love you because it will be balanced. The energy will be balanced and it won't be this very toxic trauma response, this darker energy that stemmed from pain because this is what it does. If you it's unconsciously manifesting from pain, from trauma, from suffering, from your childhood, you're going to be manifesting that in your external life. You're going to be manifesting, especially in your relationships, people who mirror that. So they will mirror the same energy that your parents might have given you. So if you had someone abandon you, so your dad, for example, and they never showed you love and they made you feel very neglected and very rejected, you'll probably manifest someone who has that exact same energy. Or if you had a very narcissistic parent, you'll manifest someone who has that same energy if you don't heal that wound within yourself. So it's like a vicious circle and it's like a curse almost and it keeps manifesting and coming into you because that's what you believe. So as soon as you switch your mindset to you validating yourself, you saying that I am good enough, it changes everything. But also having a balanced feminine and masculine energy as well, because one of the most unattractive things for women and for men is when you find someone who has very unbalanced masculine and feminine energy levels. So for a man, if they come across a woman who hasn't got enough feminine energy they will be repelled by her and it really doesn't matter how externally attractive she may be she could have the best ass in the world <laughs> or the best body etc but if she comes across as extremely masculine which a lot of women do who have been through extreme trauma because that's the way they deal with it and that's the way they cope it will repel a lot of men because men obviously crave feminine energy and just like women, we crave masculine energy. So for a woman, a man who has very submissive, overly feminine energy, will find that, you know, in general, will find it very off-putting because then we just turn into a mum because we don't want to have a very feminine man who literally just turns into a man-child. <laughs> you know, as a woman, especially a strong woman, you know, in a feminine energy, you need a man to match that. You need to have that nice connection, that magnet um, spark, because that's what attracts, opposites attract. So it can be quite complex, but the real key is you just need to balance your masculine and feminine energy, the yin and the yang, because when you have yin and yang, you are now whole. <laughs> so you, it helps you become detached and it helps you become very neutral and you don't become clingy to people. You don't expect people to do things for you. And this is very, very attractive to people externally. So, but more importantly, it will make you feel peace. It will give you the inner peace that you are craving because in reality, people are only craving to be saved by someone or loved by someone in a relationship because they don't feel safe. They don't feel happy. They don't feel joy. So real empowerment is knowing that you can have all this energy within you. You don't need it externally. So I highly, highly recommend meditating 
because this massively helped me on my journey and doing things that help you raise your own frequency because these were the steps that I took that really, really changed my life. So it's really a combination of connecting to the feminine energy of empathy, compassion, mercy, and flow, you know, intuition, psychic connection, you know, spirituality. But then at the opposite ends, it was me connecting to a more grounded, masculine, strong, you know, warrior type energy. So going to the gym, you know, connecting to that kind of strong aggressive energy sometimes you know the dark feminine having these sort of energies coexisting is what massively helped me and changed me <laughs> and it broke that hex that i had put upon myself from childhood trauma so it's not your parents fault you know they were just doing their best you know most of the time so again it doesn't help with blaming your parents because that doesn't heal you <laughs> that makes you worse and um again it's showing empathy compassion but at the same time you know a, a big mistake that people make in the spiritual path that i see a lot is they be too nice and this is very unattractive and toxic because if you're overly nice you were just it's another form of manipulation ironically because you were just manipulating people to accept you to like you to you know <laughs> keep you in their life etc but in reality that's not empowerment that's not being spiritual true spirituality and empowerment stems from authenticity when you're authentic that's when you're strong that's when you're at peace <laughs> that's when you really are strong attractive energy and this is what has really like helped me massively in my own life and i can't stress it enough so tap into what you want to do tap into what makes you feel good what makes you feel empowered and strong stop basing your self-worth on the opinions of other people this will set you free and this ironically is what gains you people in your life because ironically once you let go of trying to be friends with people of trying to people please of trying to like oh you know get your ex back or get this man or get this woman that you fancy that's when they come to you it's like you know you never really get who you want when you really want it and that's the annoying thing about the universe that i've noticed when you really really want something you don't get it but then it's like when you stop caring when you let go then it comes to you <laughs> then that person will come to you but then it's like it's too late because it's like i don't want you anymore <laughs> and i've noticed this so many times not just with people and lovers but like with money and career opportunities and you know anything and um, it's like because you have when you have that resistance when you put things up above yourself on a pedestal you never get it because you're basically saying to the universe and to yourself that you don't deserve it so it's not going to come to you because you're saying you're not worthy of that man of that girl of that dream job whatever the hell it is you're not worthy of it so you're pushing it away so you really have to just not give a fuck <laughs> it really is true like the more i just don't care about things i've noticed the more things flow the more things come to me and as soon as i start to get attached to things as soon as i go into like that old mindset and i start to let that old codependency that fear because it's always linked to fear you know all these codependent things that we do is always linked to fear as soon as you let fear get into your life that's when things start oh leaving you so it's very important to acknowledge this otherwise it can really be hell and so destructive because unfortunately this does happen you know most of the time to very kind-hearted people because a lot of the time it is just genuine hard working loving people who have just had a very rough upbringing um, and then you know you're just playing out that trauma it's just a trauma response and all you want is love you know so it is really heartbreaking it's really sad but we have to like push that aside and you can grieve but at the same time you have to get that inner strength you have to get that i don't give a fuck energy anymore you have to connect to that masculine energy because if you don't 
you will never heal. <laughs> you will never have the life that you want. And this is the hard lesson that I had to learn and go through. And when I find myself slipping, it always turns to chaos. So you must be aware of this and you must keep that strong sense of self. And ironically, even though it can seem harsh, like, oh, why can't people just love us? In the end of the day, it's actually a good thing because it's like, you don't want your self-love, your self-worth based on other people because you are putting all the power in their hands because that's what you're doing. If you're being people-pleasing and codependent and needy and clingy, you're putting, you're putting your life, your whole essence and consciousness and mindset of how you view yourself into the hands of other people and they can squash you, they can crush you like that. And this is why people get so heartbroken and destroyed by, especially by narcissistic relationships, because unfortunately when you have this mindset, you always attract narcissistic people. It's just how it is, because that's what they're attracted to. So you're gonna get hurt really badly and I've experienced this a lot in my life especially in past relationships so it's very important to really just take a step back and I highly advise anyone who feels like this to just like really step back really value who you are as a person and look outside yourself and within yourself and see what serves me and what doesn't serve me and if anything is draining you get rid of it because ironically you can't help people because a lot of people who are in this situation they always want to help people as well but you can't fill other people's cups if yours is empty <laughs> it's just not going to happen and then you always and then you further attack yourself because it's like oh as soon as you get rejected by that girl or that guy you further blame yourself and then it's like you try to change yourself and I used to do this you know I even got cosmetic cosmetic surgery done in my first first relationship and because I felt not good enough I, f I would try to change myself oh I'll get boobs and then he'll love me <laughs> it's, it sounds ridiculous but this is how people think and it goes on all over the place and unfortunately you know and again I'm not bashing cosmetic surgery because if done in the right energy yeah, it can make you it can make people feel amazing you know getting loads of saggy skin removed or nose job or you know something that they really don't like about themselves if you're doing it for you don't do it to please other people you know that's the difference so do it for the right reasons do it for your own self-empowerment for your own self-worth not because oh you want to change yourself for someone else so they love you so they accept you so they keep you in their life because this will never ever result in joy, in love or peace. It will never be healthy. It will always end in tears. And I know this <laughs> from my own experience. So the most attractive thing you can do is to love yourself. And it's just so like cliche and cringy to hear, but in reality, it, it is so true. Really know that it isn't just how you look, and again, it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, do yourself up or, you know, makeup's toxic. You know, do whatever the hell you want with your appearance. It really doesn't matter. But it has to be done in a positive energy. Not in a, I hate myself, so I have to wear a whole face of makeup to cover all my flaws, flaws, to cover myself. Because, you know, if you can't step out your door without makeup, that's a big red flag. <laughs> you know, I used to be like this. I used to spend like three hours doing myself up as a teenager before I would step out the door, even if it was just to Sainsbury's or, you know, <laughs> grocery shopping or something really, you know, mediocre where you don't need to do that. I couldn't do it. But now I go out the house and most of the time I don't wear makeup. You know, I wear makeup mainly just to do videos and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Maybe a little bit here and there. But, um, and I don't even like wearing heavy makeup. I wear lashes and a bit of powder. Um, but you see, unfortunately nowadays, you know, people transform their whole face and wear so many layers and contouring, literally like drag queens to change their whole face shape. And again, like if you like doing that because of the artistic aesthetic, because it is very artistic and it is very cool. You know, I'm an artist and I appreciate how much skill goes into like that sort of thing. Um, 
that's great you know be creative have fun with your face and doing that sort of thing but if you're doing it for the wrong reasons because you hate yourself because you feel like you're not good enough without the makeup then that's a huge red flag that's something that really really needs to be addressed because you'll never find peace or true love <laughs> from another person or within yourself if you have that energy so I hope this video helps you and if you have any questions then comment down below and I'll try to answer them as much as I can. But if you do, if you are struggling with this and you require one-to-one -one help with me personally then I do do oracle card readings. So I would put that down below in the link, I'll put the link down below in the description box. Um, or visit thegoddesscoven.net. There's also a link there. I also have a free third eye ebook, so you can also get that to help open your third eye, so <laughs> you're not so obsessed with the body and the flesh. Um, and until next time, guys, I'm sending you lots of love, lots of light. Hands up. <laughs>